All right, what do you got, Steve? I got something really light. Um, have you heard of Ziv Television Programs? Z I V. No. Brian, I'm asking you. No, I've never heard of Ziv. Fantastic. It was established. As a Real major... quick, Ant put the scissors down. Oh my god, he has sharp objects. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have like Never something like fun. soft that doesn't make noise that we could put in his head? <laughs> I, I lost the Velcro strips. They're surrounded. <laughs> no, Velcro's bad. No, he was playing. I've been playing with those from uh, multiple yeah. episodes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the Ziv television programs. So it was established as a major radio syndicator. So that okay. makes sense why you never heard of it, but it was the first major run television syndicator. So they were the oh. first television network syndicator. Yeah. Okay. So what they would do, they create several series in the 1950s, sell them to regional sponsors. Do we know any of these shows? Turn, yeah, that, was, that was my next question. Would sell it to local stations. I'm only going to go over the one sh major TV show because it actually has an interesting first. Is it the Honeymooners? It's not the Honeymooners. Mr. Ed? It's not Mr. Ed. Buck Rogers. Nope. It was... Howdy the, Doody. It was the first major TV hit. It was The Cisco Kid. The Cisco Kid. It was a TV series. I know series. you don't want to unleash the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Running 1950 to 1956. Hmm. It was starring Dunkel, Duncan Ronaldo, um, who played the Cisco Kid, mm -hmm. and Leo Carrillo as the jovial sidekick. So the story, it's actually the Jovo sidekick. His name was Poncho. Ah. Slightly um, probably not PC. Kid. At the uh, time? At the time, you know, 1950, 1956. Well, I, wait, be... wait, the Lone Ranger had to have been influenced by this, right? You would think so. They, I feel like I've heard of this. So, so this, this series specifically was syndicated to individual stations and was like a kid show, basically. Oh, it was a kid show. It was like a cowboy Western kid show. Okay. Uh, but it was the, technically the first syndicated series. Hmm. Yeah. Not only was it the first syndicated series, it was also the first television series to be filmed in color. What? Wow. But it wasn't seen it wasn't. in color to a lot until the 60s. Mm -hmm. So it's nobody nice, had color this TV. So they had, it, they had it ready to go. They had it ready to go in color, but Get him. What what that, wait, what was that Western show we were watching the other day? It was pretty fucking cool. You had it on here. He uh, was, was that Have Gun Will Travel? Have Gun Will Travel, uh, which was some episodes were written by Gene Roddenberry. Oh, yeah. Which is like you'll hear Star Trek stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Like the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Uh, and yeah. But, but uh, I was going to say, it's not like like color film wasn't around. Look at Wizard of Oz. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. It's just uh, expensive. Or, Here's a yeah. question Walt and I had the other day. We were watching Petticoat Junction. Mm -hmm. okay. And he was talking about how vibrant the colors were. Mm -hmm. And I theorized that when they filmed shows back then to be in, both in color and black and white, they had to mess with the tones a little. Because I know, like, you, color. I know, like, if you look at what the set of the monsters look like, like the walls are pink. Mm -hmm. because, and the monsters? Yeah, yeah, because that showed up as gray. Yeah. Oh. But when you film in color, if you're both showing it in color and people have black and white TVs, do you have to adjust the color palette on the color side so that it still appears good on the black and white side? And that's why the, the colors look pink, so absolutely, vibrant. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I don't know um, if you would know. Probably. Okay. I would say, uh, it, in theory, it makes sense that if you are wearing a dark green, it's going to show up blacker than if light green, which will show up as light you know, gray. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that makes sense. But it also, when you think of um, video pictures, here's my old editors, the saturation of something. Mm -hmm. Like when a color is very saturated, yeah. it's, you know, like red. You're not wearing a maroon in while filming something, you're wearing a bright red. It, yeah. It has to have a set level of saturation where you know that's what the color is. That's where we're talking about. Like the lipstick is that's so. Is, yeah. Like, you need something. Like, it's like saturated. glowing. Yeah, yeah. It's like glowing. Yeah. And I theorized that was because since the shows back then, people still have black and white TVs. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be watchable. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I think you're right. Okay. It makes sense. Okay. Um, with this, <clears throat> it was the first color TV series, um, which was pretty interesting. It's another first. It's the first syndicated series, so we got a duel there, right? Yeah. Right? Hmm. Besides that, this, it, it was kind of a basic show. It was like a Robin Hood-esque show, but what I also found interesting about it is- So he would kind of travel around and like help people with their problems? It, it, he would like, he was against the corrupt officials who were like running the town, so they like, they would- do bad he things people. to people and he would help people. He was a Robin Hood mm. figure, yeah. A and a modern Robin Hood figure is something like better help because it helps right. people. It helps people, yeah. So 
If <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just a stretch. <laughs> the big, big stretch. Look, we didn't have any it's like long way to go. We didn't have any violent psychotics in this episode <laughs> that I could do my usual. You know, if you had better help. Yeah. He, uh, I, <laughs> but you know, if you waited like. 10 seconds it was it was going to be a better transition your your shoulder wouldn't have blown out of its socket oh, <laughs> you can continue okay <laughs> i just i was getting nervous because we're almost like at the end you know yeah no it's fine it's fine all right <laughs> <laughs> but uh betterhelp.com is the online therapy tool really yeah you could sign up talk to the first i'm hearing about yeah talk to an online licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home Mm -hmm. click our link get a discount customize your experience and talk to the person that you want to talk to get the help you need get a better help Mm. betterhelp.com that was beautiful. Loved that was it. the best read you've ever done. Do you know people loved my um your weird like psychotic I've gotten multiple thing? people being like that was great. Like not even like they were like not like not even funny They're like dude that was like a great NPR style ad read. It was my, it was torturous sitting across from you. NPR <laughs> Brian will return it time. Hell. <laughs> yeah, it was hell. <laughs> Not being allowed to rip it. You said you something like the wrong word, and it was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I have to get him, and I can't. <laughs> He's being too morose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I am morose. <laughs> this is Ira Glass. You're listening to Revealing History. Yeah, yeah that's what he was. Um, <laughs> happy, happy, happy. Back to uh, Cisco Kid. Yeah. Well, this is Did you ever a- see the Frisco kid real quick? Yes. Because that's all I'm thinking oh. about this whole time. Well, I was thinking about the that? Waco kid who's the same guy, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. Oh, okay. So there's a movie that came out which is trying to be terrible movie. It there, yeah. it wants to be Blazing Saddles, right? It's sort of it's just a you, western with but, Harrison Ford. But and you cast Gene, Gene Wilder. Wilder. Yeah. The premise is Gene Wilder is an Orthodox Jewish rabbi who is from the, Poland. From Poland. He's a Polish immigrant who has to get to like San the, Francisco. the synagogue in San Francisco. He's crossing the country with Harrison There's a synagogue Ford. in San Francisco. Yeah, he's the new ra- he's the new rabbi in San Francisco. <laughs> and he has to get from like New York to San Francisco and Harrison Ford is his partner. I guess zany stuff happens. Zany huh? stuff happens. Uh, and they and suit. they learn from each other yes, and they, right, they right, like each other. Right. Like their relationship is honestly the best thing in the movie. But every time you say Cisco kid, I keep thinking of this like this like forgotten kid. shitty movie yeah. from the 70s. Why have we both seen that? We watched it together, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Did we? Yeah. While well, you were trying to make babies in space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching, watching that on television. <laughs> yeah, we watched it together, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I remember I rented it from Netflix. I think I told you it was good. Yeah, you did. Yeah. And then we watched it together. I was like, what the fuck were you thinking? You're thinking of the Waco kid. <laughs> that, that was when we were watching like just every Western. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, dude, you, you guys should do watch- Fresco Kid. Honestly, <laughs> after hearing this, I think you guys should watch it. You guys should watch if I you would watch find the it, show. you should watch the Cisco Kid. So the main title, uh, the main title, the main role was Duncan Ronaldo, right? He played the Cisco Kid. Ronaldo did his own stunts. Yeah, and he can score a he mean goal. Gun, he learned how to do some gunplay. His friend Poncho was using a bullwhip. But during one of the stunts, he Mama received tomato, baby. an injury. So he would actually get injured a lot. In one episode, he dodges a 65-pound paper mache boulder. The old school oh, like, Indiana, Jones. Away, Indiana Jones yeah. boulder, which might be one of the first scenes that that was in. Uh-huh. Right? We'll talk to start, at, start at the trope. Yeah, it might okay. have. Um, it hit him in the head. I'm going to go on through one at Kirk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hit him in the head, broke two neck vertebrae, and he was paralyzed for two months. From the I don't think better help can it. help you with paralyzation. No, but <laughs> you can reverse paralyzation with better help. <laughs> well, he just he just said that he was, he was paralyzed for two months I think because like he the broke swelling, two neck vertebrae. Yeah, maybe like the yeah. swelling goes down and it eases oh, pressure. And it's a temporary but how sick That's that? got to be scary. How sick is that? You don't know if you're going to get better. Mm. You know, so Cisco Kid. Yeah, it's got a, a couple of firsts. It sounds That's awesome. I kind of want to. And it a Ziv shot. is the first syndication network. Network. They they produced a huh. couple of different shows. Look it up. You can see what they did. I didn't know any of them because we're talking the fifties, so it's mm-hmm. like I'm not very well versed. But you might know some. Hmm. But yeah, first first syndication. They started it, and they were a radio station. So a lot of people, I feel, don't know them when they should. Did uh did he continue doing his own stunts after this? Or I think he did. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
I think he was like a guy who was just like, I'm doing my own stunts and that's it. We're also talking so early on. How did you not bring up the Eddie Cantor comedy theater television show? <laughs> How did you not bring up Eddie Cantor? I don't know. I like the dumb ones. They know how to make love. <laughs> make mine vanilla. I'll have vanilla. <laughs> um, he also did Sea Hunt. Oh, yeah, that's the one with um. That's um, the one with the brother Mike. Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> yeah, that is Lloyd Bridges. Yeah. Yeah. We. I started watching this on Pluto. It is the <laughs> just horseshit. I started watching this on Pluto and I became like, you know, like you turn a show on, you watch it for like five minutes. And you're like, this is, this is amazing. It's just like him. He's like this ex special forces guy who just goes around doing, th he's either telling stories about when he was in the military or like, they're like, Hey, we want to do an underwater uh, movie stunt. Can you help us? And then he narrate, like there's so much stuff that happens underwater. When is this from? 50s, 50s? 60s? Oh, sea okay. Hunt? Yeah. It's sea Hunt is 1958 to 1961. What was the Roy Scheider show where he was underwater in the Sea Quest? Sea Quest. Yes. But like he, since they're underwater and there's no sound, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like 30 seconds of just footage. And then Lloyd Bridges starts narrating for a bit. And then it's 30 more seconds of just underwater footage. And it's like, but like, you're like, this is what was entertaining back then. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think people would have the attention span for this anymore. Well, it's also, especially back then, seeing that stuff is brand new. Yeah. 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 You know, you haven't seen that. Like they like, got the big old, they have the big old, uh, like, masks and the the, yeah. like the big tank and he's wearing speedos i this it's i don't know if it's comparable but it's i think it's the closest thing that it's in living memory that we can remember but do you remember when planet earth came out yeah the nature oh, the BBC show, show? Yeah, yeah. Was, okay. and Whoa. it was like this is what hd was made for you know yeah. it was the okay. brand new, hd was the brand new thing and fucking planet earth was the shit it was, it was fucking you know? cool <laughs> it was beautiful and they is. aired like yeah. every night for like five yeah. nights, right? Yeah. I, I think Sea Sea Hunt was more like like Marty Stopper's Wild America. I don't know if you remember that those shows. That'd be yeah, like I've heard of them. I've never yeah. actually seen it. Like it was just like showing things going on in the woods, mm -hmm. and like someone's talking about what's what's going on, but at least it's in color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one other tidbit I just discovered about Ziv. Yeah. They had a show called Highway Patrol. Have you ever heard of this? No. Highway Patrol ran Early for like five years. It's a hundred chips, hundred fifty six <laughs> episode show, wow. but it is the first American series to be broadcast in West Germany. Really? Yeah. Huh. So that's these Americans are always getting into high shakes on the highway. <laughs> they like this highway patrol. <laughs> it reminds me of the Osborne. Remember when the Fiora made that? <laughs> Those were the days, yeah. <laughs> All these shoes, extra cars on the road. <laughs> Why are they not showing their papers more often? <laughs> yeah, Ziv, pretty, pretty great. 